This video serves as a warning both to you and to me. I expected when I bought two Huawei Band 9s that the hardware tracking performance would be as good or maybe even better than the Huawei Band 8. The Huawei Band 9 looks more or less the same as the Band 8 and the Band 8 was one of my top performers in my testing last year. Now with a lot more time having passed to develop the hardware and the firmware, I was hoping that Huawei would be able to squeeze an even better heart rate performance out of the Band 9 and I assumed it would at minimum be as good as the Band 8. But the saying appears to be true, when you assume, you make an out of you and me. So today we'll take a look at my initial testing of the heart rate tracking performance of the brand new Huawei Band 9 and you can judge for yourself if you're disappointed too. And here you can see an overview of that performance for one of the easiest exercises for a watch to track indoor cycling, which I tested on myself for three sessions. Now I should mention I was actually planning to release a full review in a couple of weeks or so, but given my initial findings, which are especially worrying for some of the results I'll get to later in this video, I thought it was important to release an initial review as soon as possible. As always, we will use the Polar H10 ECG chest strap as the reference, which is generally very reliable. And we want the individual heart rate measurements to be as close to this blue line as possible since that indicates the best agreement between the Polar H10 and the Huawei Band 9. And as you can see this generally looks okay-ish. Most points are on or close to the blue line so that's good but there are quite a few points away from the blue line. There's some up here, also some up here and especially many down here. So that means that in these moments right here the watch detected a too low heart rate. Now based on what I remember from testing the Huawei Band 8 a year ago this definitely seems a bit worse. We can also see that this R value, which is the correlation, is not amazing, not terrible, but definitely not amazing at 0.89. But let's take a look at the individual spinning sessions to see why there's some points above and below the blue line. And here we have the first example interval spinning session where we see a decent agreement between the Huawei Band 9 in red and the Polar H10 in blue-green. Now along the horizontal axis we have the clock time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. Now for the second two thirds of this ride, the agreement is almost spot on except for this slight deviation right here. But in the beginning, the watch struggled a lot more. So it missed this first segment right here where I had an increase in my heart rate. And during the second and third segment, it also struggled a bit, not completely correctly detecting my heart rate. Again, this is not terrible, but also not great. There are some watches that are basically spot on. Now for this second spinning session, we again mostly see a good agreement, though it struggled a bit right here, detecting a too low heart rate and also twice detecting a weird spike in my heart rate. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And finally, for the third spinning session, it actually looks pretty good. It misses some of the dips in my heart rate, but overall, this is more or less spot on. Okay, so even though that doesn't look terrible, it did create some first doubts in my mind about the performance of the Huawei Band 9 compared to its predecessor. But as always, let's put all of this into perspective more quantitatively by comparing the correlation of the Band 9 against many of the other watches I've tested previously. And that overview is displayed right here. As always, we'll use the correlation value to rank the watches. And I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And I marked the Huawei Event 9 right here. And as you can see, compared to all the other watches out there, it's somewhere in the middle of all watches. A correlation of around 0.9 might still be good enough for many of you, but you should just be aware that there might be better watches out there. But these labels are a bit hard to read, so let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.8 or higher. And as you can see, the Huawei Band 9 is doing about as well as, for instance, the 400 255, the Polar Vantage M, and even the Huawei Band 7 right here. But if we look at the Huawei Band 8, we can actually see this is doing a lot better than both the Huawei Band 7 and Huawei Band 9 we're testing in this video. And interestingly, as you regular viewers will know, Huawei watches are generally actually very good heart rate trackers, especially the GT series and also the Huawei Watch Fit 2. Now, I often actually recommend that the Huawei Band 8 is a good budget fitness tracker, but I'm not sure if I would do that now for the Huawei Band 9 based on these results. So again, I'm not saying it's absolutely terrible. I was just hoping for a better performance from Huawei, which as a company generally has its heart rate tracking figured out quite well. By the way, you might have noticed I have two Huawei Band 9s, but we're only looking at the results for the Huawei Band 9 on my right arm. I'm having a bit of trouble getting access to the data from the other Huawei Band on my left arm, but I should have that figured out for my full review. But okay, let's make things slightly more difficult by looking at the results for running outside. 
and those results are displayed right here. Now I could only do a single run because of an injury, but I still wanted to include these results. And as you can see for this quite straightforward run, it did quite well. Most points are on or close to the blue line, especially here in the higher heart rate range. There's a tiny bit of deviation right here. Now this actually wasn't an interval run, which I often do, and interval runs are generally more difficult than this for a watch to track. But overall, looking at the general patterns right here, this looks pretty good still, and the correlation is quite high at 0.99. Now the correlation cannot be higher than 1, so a correlation of 0.99 is pretty good actually. And looking at the run itself, this indeed looks quite good. The red line mostly overlaps with the blue line, only right here they detect a slightly too high heart rate. So for this more or less continuous run, it actually did pretty good, and there's no clear sign of cadence lock or anything. And you can also see that when you compare it to other watches out there. And here we have that overview, and you can see that the Huawei Band 9 actually did quite well compared to other watches. Though I should again note that for many of the other watches that did an interval training, which tends to be a bit harder, so they might just have a lower correlation because of the way I did the exercise. So even though it had a significantly easier task than many of the other watches out there, it's still a good indication that it shows potential for running outside. Though again, for biking inside, it didn't do so great, so mixed results so far. So far, this is not looking amazing, but also not something to really worry about yet. However, the next exercise seems to be too much for the Huawei Band 9 to handle. But before showing you those results, I hope that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you. And if you have a few seconds, a comment or even just a quick like would really help. But back to the testing. And as you regular views will know, the next test I always perform is outside cycling. Now this is much harder for most watches because there's much more bumpiness. Also, I tend to hold on to the handlebars quite tightly, which for many watches also seems to reduce the quality of the heart rate signal. And as you can see in this overview right here, this also seems to be the case for the Huawei Band 9. We now see quite a few points below the blue line, indicating that the Huawei Band 9 detected a too low heart rate in these moments. Now compared to indoor cycling, which you were looking at before, this actually looks a lot worse and the correlation is a lot lower now at 0.64 but let's take a look at the individual bike rides to see what's going on and we see the most issues for the first bike ride that i did again the polar h10 so the reference is in blue green and as you can see the huawei band 9 in red generally detected a way too low heart rate for more or less the entire ride it kept detecting a way too low heart rate but as I said, this is the worst example. The second ride I did looked a bit better. It did quite often still detect it to low heart rate, but for a large part of the ride, it was at least closer to my actual heart rate. And for the third bike ride, it might look even better, especially for this second part right here. So here it was more or less spot on, but it again struggled in the beginning right here. So overall for me, not a satisfactory performance for cycling outside. And again, we can compare these results to those of many of the other watches I've tested before. And here you can see that overview with again the Huawei Band 9 marked in red. And as you can see, it's really not doing well. It's in the lower middle class of watches, I would say. There's again plenty of better watches out there, similar to what we saw before for cycling indoors. But where for cycling indoors, it still had a decent correlation at around 0.9. The correlation is actually a lot lower now to the point where I wouldn't want to use it for cycling outside. Now we can see that there's many other watches that struggle as well. So in general, I would just take the those watches with a correlation of around 0.9 or higher but as you can see that did include the Huawei Band 8 that I tested previously so again the Huawei Band 8 is doing significantly better than the Huawei Band 9 at least in my testing and the Huawei Band 7 is somewhere in between though this also wouldn't be my first choice for cycling outside. Now other options include for instance the Fitbit Charge 6 but also the Pixel Watch 2 but also other Huawei devices are doing pretty good especially for instance the Huawei Watch Fit 2 and the GT3 Pro. And as you're used to by now, the top performers on me at least are different Apple watches. And this was actually the point where I was really quite disappointed with the results I got so far for the Band 9. I don't know if any of you have any experience with the watch. If you do, please let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off-the-cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. But let's now see if the Band 9 can redeem itself by looking at the performance for weightlifting.
Weightlifting is also an exercise that most watches struggle with because there's so much tension on my arm. And here you can see the results for the Huawei Band 9. Now I only did a single weightlifting session so far, but the patterns tend to be pretty clear. You can see right here that in the higher heart rate range, most points are below the blue line, indicating that at the height of my heart rate, so when I was doing a set of exercises, the watch wasn't able to keep up with that increase in heart rate. And this is the common problem most watches have. In between sets, they're good because there's no tension on my arm, but the moment there's tension on my arm, they really start to struggle. And this also appears to be the case for the Huawei Band 9. And as you can see, the correlation is also quite low at 0.67, but let's take a look at the session itself. And we can see that very clearly looking at the weightlifting session itself. So each time I did a set of exercises, one of these peaks in heart rate was created. And the Huawei Band 9 just wasn't able to detect that. It basically detected none of the peaks in my heart rate correctly. So for weightlifting, at least with the current firmware, it doesn't seem to do very well. And you can also see that by comparing it to other watches out there. And looking at that overview compared to other watches, we again see that the Huawei Band 9 is somewhere in the lower middle class of watches. It's not the absolute worst out there, but I wouldn't trust its performance for weightlifting. Similar to what I said for biking outside, I would generally only use watches with a correlation of around 0.9 or higher. So that again includes the Fibbit Charge 6 and Pixel Watch, different Huawei watches and especially Apple watches. And if we now look at the Huawei Band 8, this is actually not that far from the Huawei Band 9. It did a little bit better, but the question is if this is significant. Both of them wouldn't be good enough for me for weightlifting. Interestingly, in the testing I did at the time, the Huawei Band 7 actually did a little bit better than the Huawei Band 8 and the Huawei Band 9. Though again, I wouldn't use any watch with a correlation below 0.9 for weightlifting, so all of them are not trustworthy in my opinion. The Huawei Band 8 is one of the devices I've recommended to several of my friends, but based on the results I've gotten so far, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that for the Huawei Band 9. Now, given that I live in a German speaking country, we might want to call it the Huawei Band 9 instead for now. Now, this is actually just an initial test, but it was so surprising I wanted to get this video out quickly. The question remains, why would the Band 9 do worse than the Band 8? Well, one explanation could actually lie in the sensor set. It seems by looking at it at least that Huawei changed the configuration of the LEDs and the sensors on the back of the watch. Now, this isn't my area of expertise, but looking at it, you can see that the Band 8 has two sets of LEDs on the outside with a large photo detector in the middle. The Band 9, on the other hand, has one set of LEDs and a photo detector very close to the top, and then another set of LEDs exactly in the middle of the watch with a second photo detector a bit further down. Now, I don't know how the signals from the two photo detectors are combined combined, but it might be that the software is not yet optimized enough to deal with two independent signals. However, this doesn't seem to be the first watch where Huawei uses multiple photo detectors. Looking at the back of some GT series watches, for instance, you can also see a symmetrical ring of photo detectors around a central pair of LEDs. So the concept of having multiple photo detectors doesn't appear to be new for Huawei. Now, this is of course pure speculation, since I'm not even sure if both LEDs and photo detectors on the Band 9 are being used to measure heart rate. It might well be that one pair was designed for heart rate and the other for oxygen saturation. Still, these initial findings of my testing are disappointing, but we'll have to wait for my full review to draw any final conclusions. And of course, I'll also test the sleep tracking in that video, which is supposed to be improved on the Band 9. Again, I hope I earned a subscribe from you. If you do decide to get a Huawei watch or a Band 9, a Whoop strap, an Aura ring, an 8 sleep pod, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, want to potentially save some money and at the same time support this channel, there are different affiliate and non affiliate links in the description below do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Band 9, check out this video on the Huawei Band 8 or this video on my top recommendations for sports and health tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.